Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, Lord. We come to you asking that you will continue to shed light on your word as we wrap this up, Lord. Continue to enlighten us in what you have to say about this tribulus event that's coming up. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So be it. All right, so we've gone through five sections of chapter 55, looking at the table of contents here. Mm -hmm. And we're going all the way down to the results of judgment. Anything before we start to wrap it up? No, let's talk about the results of judgment. All right. Now, if you're just joining us, this is, like I said, part six. Part five or six? Six. Part six of a, a series on the purification of the earth. Anyway, let's go on. Verse 90, what do you say? Mm -hmm. And when it appears that all has ended for man, that it is death which has won or evil that has triumphed, from out of the darkness will come the beings to the light. From death they will be revived into the true life. And out of the abyss of evil... They shall arise up to practice the eternal law of God. Now let's 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 slow this down just a little bit here, because what he's, he's saying here first, and when it appears that all has ended for man, remember we're talking about this period where heaven is shut. With this period, heaven will be shut for a while. No prayers will be answered, or you know something like that, um, as heaven is shut and the people are crying out so it's at that point when people are going to think all is lost mm -hmm. the father's not helping us man seems like he's just trying to destroy us the earth seems like he has a problem with us and ain't, uh, there's nothing you know and so when all seems like it's all done you know then you know um when evil has triumphed he says from out of the darkness will come the beings to the light from the death they will uh, be revised into true life out of the abyss of the evil, they shall rise up to practice the eternal law of God. We're talking about those who keep the covenant, those who, those who are working on keeping the covenant now, will seem like they are appearing from the death, They're coming out of nowhere. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm trying, I don't know if it's making any sense, but it's talking about the hundred forty-four thousand here. That's what I was wondering. I was wondering if that's what it was talking about. But then I was like, well, no, maybe the 144 has already appeared on the scene. And this is talking about the people I did not know. No, it's, it's talking about them when, you know, things are bad. And you can imagine you have pockets of survivors who are, you know, trying to continue surviving. Yet it's pretty hard for them. Yet there's nobody around. And then they'll hear a tale of, of you know, or have something, to, you know, Somebody tells them, well, I don't know how it all work, but there are people who are doing okay during this time. There are people that are making it. There are people that, you know, are surviving, you know, better than others. They actually have food. They actually have shelter. They actually have clothes to wear. And so, you know, these people who have otherwise thought that life had ended will, you know, start to migrate to these people learning to practice the eternal law of God. Well, you know, we're always talking about how the movie industry uh, always, maybe they have had this book all along and they're making movies off of it. You know, you mm -hmm, think about right. Avatar, you think about all these sci-fi movies book and things of, that, yeah, things of that nature. But then in all these movies, there's always a remnant of people that the other ones are trying to make it to get there to them. Yeah, like There's that always somebody that. stored away. I am legend. Yeah, I am legend. Then there's the uh, the the, uh, uh, um, uh, the book of Eli. Yeah, there was a group yeah, of people. Yeah, there was a group of people. There's always this certain group that's, that's the other ones are trying to get there. And, and they're always doing good. There's always a peaceful mm -hmm. community, you mm -hmm. know. When you when like e, well, like when in I am legend, I'm, I'm vague, I can vaguely see that you know part of the movie in my mind, but. You had armed guards at the gate, but when the armed guards opened the gate, you know, everybody else, there were children running around and playing, and mm -hmm. everybody was being happy or whatever. Yeah, so so that's what you're talking about, like this remnant. Yeah, there's remnant. A, there's some, the, the survivors. The, the scripture calls it, you know, not the scripture, I, I said that, but the, the, um, the church or the rapture crowd wants to call them the left behind, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, it's, it's those that endure to the end that will be saved. So, 
some of us actually want to be left behind. Mm -hmm. 91. Yep. Not all shall know the abyss. For just as some have tried to remain apart from the war of passions, ambitions, and hatred, and have lived outside of the new Sodom. Now here, here we're talking about people like you. You know, people who have rejected the new Sodom that are trying to get outside of the new stock, new this 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 Egyptian Babylonian culture where we live. They have rejected this stuff. They're 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 they are not. You know, bowing to Baal, you know, you know, every Christmas or whatever, or they're they're, you know, or they, these people are obedient to the Father even in in calm times, even when things are going okay. These are the people who are um, set apart. Set set apart. Working to be right. Set apart. Others who have sinned much will yet know to stop in time. And by their opportune repentance and complete regeneration, avoid many tears and much pain. And this one, you know, this one feels like me a little bit because it wasn't too many years ago that I was out there in a materialistic world, having forgotten all about the Father's commandments and Sabbath days and such. And, you know, I had a bit of a little wake up call there back in 2013, 2014 that made me say, hey, um, I don't think I'm on the right track. And then, you know, I called out to him and he put me on a different path. He put me on the path that I'm on now. And that's a path, like I said, complete regeneration, you know, as I you know, try to get back to obedience to his word and his will. So there's a lot of people in that in that group, these, these people who. You know, are going to stop, and, and and I hope there's some people in this video that will do it. You know, realize that hey, you know, um, this is a lot of bad stuff, and it don't quite line up with what we learn, and so maybe they will, you know, call on the Father to come in and help get them straight. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. of all the moral and material structure of this humanity, there shall not be left here one stone upon another, because of the new man to appear on this earth. It is necessary to erase all stain, to destroy all sin, and to leave only that which is of good seed. So no stone will, will be left on, on the earth. He's referring to the earthquake. He's going to shake every building down. Like, like we keep alluding to, there's other books. Um, the, the books of the Old Testament, the Old Testament prophets all talk about this these earthquake events that's going to topple all of the false gods, topple all of the buildings. This is saying that it's necessary for before the new man comes. You know, after this is all over, this is going to be a new planet, just like it was. You know, after the floods with Noah. You know, there is no more evil people. So when when them eight people got off of that boat, you know, four four husbands and four wives, they they had the mission to repopulate the whole earth, and that's what the good seed will have. You know, after this tribulation is over. 93. The splendor of my presence and my justice shall be contemplated all over the globe. And before the light idols will fall, traditional routines will be forgotten and sterile rites will be abandoned. Yeah, it's talking, it's talking about the churches here and a lot of the falsities that we find inside of our you know, churches and talking about Christianity, Catholicism. Uh, Mormonism, uh, Hinduism, and Muslimism, and Judaism, all of them, you know, they have elements of truth in them, but pretty much they're all fratricidal and materialistic and, you know, have false doctrines that prevent anybody from making any type of spiritual evolution. But all of that stuff's going away. All of it's going to be cleansed. So it, you can line up with all of the things that's going to be wiped off the planet. Um, the, the scientists who loves making war, the warmongers, the people who like enslaving people, the, um, the um, now now we have the, the, the here's the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug, him and his house about to be toppled over too. One single door will remain open for the salvation of men, that is spirituality. Yeah, so that's going to be the other choice. No religions, no no other, you know, thinking and believing, you know, people coming up with fanciful ideas. Those will get you killed. The only way you're going to be able to survive in this new type of environment is if you have 
the 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 father's guidance if you in his will if you're in line with you know where he wants you to place your footsteps will you be able to survive if you go out on your own you, you're going to perish those who who, who re rebel now and seem to enjoy it their rebellion then are going to cost them he who wishes to save himself will have to leave behind his pride his false greatness his low passions and his selfishness. Yeah, talking about um, um, the way we are now, like we read a little earlier, how it seems natural that these things are, you know, a part of our lives, whereas being, you know, unselfish and, you know, loving each other seems alien. Well, he's saying that we're going to have to put this stuff down if you, you know, you want to be saved yeah. from this stuff that's coming. We all do, you know. I had to, I had to myself, you know. I, I, I'm a, I, I'm a prideful person. I am a selfish person, you know. And I'm having to learn that charity and stuff is necessary. So I'm actually having to change my life, and that's part of the preparation. That's part of what he's talking about by, you know, moving away from the new Sodom. It actually takes work to become unselfish. It takes, it, 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 it takes effort because you know we're not raised to be like that. Very bitter shall be the cup from which men must drink in the great battle. And yet, I will tell you, happy shall be those who drink from that cup and depart from earth already purified. Now, here we're talking about the people who actually die. Like I said earlier, some people, a lot of people will die in this tribulation. These are the people that actually get killed in the events. You notice I don't say... You know, any I don't try to say anything bad about those those people on that path, or you know, try to make them feel like they they're doing an error. Because looks what happens to them. He says, "Happy shall be those who drink from that cup and depart from the earth already purified." So you know, these are the people that die. Go ahead. For when they return in other bodies to this world, their message will be one of light, peace, and wisdom. So they're gonna leave as evil people, but they're gonna come back as the most righteous that this planet has ever heard. Now, the left behind, the left, the, not gonna say left behind, but the, the, the chosen seed, the ones who have actually made it through the tribulation, the people who are alive now, is gonna be alive 20 years from now. These people are still, you can imagine, they're still gonna have ailments. Mm -hmm. They're still gonna have, you know, remembrances of past deeds and, and such, you know, that they, you know, that, you know, they may still feel a little bit, you know, sorrowful for having caused all of this trouble and these tribulations, there's still going to be a little bit of stuff there. But not the people that's going to be purified in the purification. They're, they're actually going to come back completely clean and, and, and ready to be the light bears. This will be the, the blessed generations. It's supposed to be four generations after yours, after the people that survived. Four generations down, we'll start to see these people return, and they're going to be... That's when it, that's when this thing is really going to take off because this is going to be a different kind of people. Okay. Different kind of people. Hmm. This the card. All right. 96. 96. The last whirlwind and the last battles with their quotas of bitterness are yet to come. It yeah. Is, so um, we ain't seen. I, I was just saying we ain't seen nothing yet. We ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> yeah. It is necessary yet for all the forces to agitate. And the atoms to spin in chaos, so that afterward there can come the lethargy, the fatigue, the sadness, and the weariness that seems like that. Yeah, so if you remember, we also go through the sea of apostasy. But what do you think causes the apostasy? What, what, do, you, what do you think causes the people to turn on their, their father and completely reject him? It's when, you know, we, all of this stuff is going on. And, you know, nothing seeming to work. I mean, nothing's working for the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug now. He's, it just seems like it is because mm -hmm. so many people are doting over him and giving him money and, you know, propping him up, making him seem like a very special person that he thinks everything's going well for him. Right. Well, when you strip all of that away and then, you know, say, okay, now fend for yourself, he, he, he's not going to have much to go on. Well, that's what's going to cause the lethargy, the fatigue, sadness, and weariness that, you know, it's going to seem like all humanity is lost. There's nothing left. You know, humanity is over. But he's saying here that, you know, that part is necessary to get us there. And that will be the hour when in the sublimity of the conscious, the vibrating echo of a trumpet 
will be heard announcing from beyond that the kingdom of life and peace comes to men of goodwill. So, and this is this is what happens after the doors of heaven are open again. When when the doors of heaven are are, are open, and you have those survivors who are now ready to embrace the Father. Well, right now nobody cares about the Father. You know, him and his Bible. And then at that point, everybody's going to be really, really interested, as you can imagine. And so now is when we're going to start to hear, like, like, like um, what is Re Revelations? I can't quote it, but it said, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God, or something mm -hmm. like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. 98. And before the voice of that trumpet, the dead in spirit will rise weeping tears of repentance. And the Father will receive them like prodigal sons, worn out from the long journey and fatigued from the great struggle, and seal their spirits, bestowing upon them the kiss of love. So that's it. This is this is what we get changed into. This is you know this is where where we end up being like the prodigal son. We're actually allowed to be back with our Father. 99. From that day forward, men shall abhor war, tear hatred and ransom from his heart, persecute sin, and begin a life of restoration and reconstruction. Yeah, this is it's, it's over at that point. No more evil on the planet. We're done with it. The, the tribulation promises to be so severe that humanity will always reject evilness from now on. No, no more war. Period. I mean, you're not gonna be able. To, somebody come up talking about we want to fight, and they probably gonna get a whoop in that day. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, yeah, they won't even entertain the thought of it. Just shut them down real yeah. quick. Yeah. Many will feel inspired by light that did not previously behold, and they will rise up to create a world of peace. Talking about the Father, we'll be able to hear Him. We'll be able to know Him. We'll. He, he's going to be a part of our, our our lives that we can recognize. He's already there now. We just you know, can't recognize him or whatever. And that's going to inspire people to want to do right. Whereas now the lack of our ability to hear him inspires us to do evil because I guess we can't hear Satan. I don't know. I guess he's all over the television and everywhere, mm -hmm. blaring through the radios and then the right. TVs and everywhere else. He, he's kind of loud and obnoxious sometimes. Um, it, it, after he's all gone, him and his mess is wiped off the planet, then, you know, we can hear that soft, still voice, which is the Father. And that, like I said, it's going to inspire us. It shall be only the beginning of the time of grace, the era of peace. The era of peace, the millennial age, 1,000 year reign. That's why the church would say when they, when they holler peace and safety, then, you know, you know that, you know, the sudden destruction awaits. It's this peace and safety is. When they say that, they're actually announcing the millennial age, and you know you have to go through this uh, uh, war and insecurity first before you're going to get in peace and safety. The Stone Age is long past. The time of science will also pass, and then the era of the spirit shall flower among men. Now, the age of science, you know, all, I, I'm an engineer. I have a master's degree in science as well, and, you know, but I do understand when it says the age of science is going to pass because, you know, we're going to focus on him and what he wants us to do. So it's, it's not so much about, you know, using you know, nature for our own greed and for our own destruction or whatever. Um, and, and, you know, our doctors using, you know, sorcery to you know, help keep us, you know, healthy or whatever. Um, you know, all of that's that's going away. We're not going to need that kind of stuff anymore. It's going to be focused more on, on you know, loving each other and, and such. The source of life will reveal great mysteries, so that man can construct a world strong in the science of good and justice and in love. Yeah, talking about the post millennial thing, talking about what we're all working for. All right, so I think that's going to wrap it up. My peace be with you. I think that's going to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think? I mean, I know it's kind of long. but I think that, you know, there's so many good points um, that I learned from there, um, you know, when I listened to it again. 
I'm sure will refresh my memory of uh, some of the things uh, about how you're supposed to, you know, be doing these things now, you know, so that um, you can be saved. That there will be a remnant of people that will be saved, and um, you know you want to be you want to be w one of those people. Uh, not necessarily, Stacy. Not necessarily. Not I mean, necessarily. The, no. Do you do you really want to be counted in that number? Everybody's going to end up being with the Father eventually. Mm -hmm. So you're given a choice now, and and you can imagine you have all humanity that is answering this question. What would you rather have? Would you have, would you rather live here on earth, enjoy all of the pleasures of earth, everything that you want? You can go in Walmart and buy right. anything out of Walmart you want to consume. Right. You know, whether it's in the movie section, the food section, whatever, don't matter. You, you, if you got the money, you can buy, you consume it, nothing will happen to you. You can do whatever you want to do in life. You don't have to be charitable. You can be stingy. You can be arrogant. You can be you, you, you can do you can be mean as, as a snake. You can be anything you want to be. Mm -hmm. And right at the end, you're going to suffer a great butt whooping to make up for all of your bad deeds. Mm -hmm. But then after the butt whooping, then you're going to be given a brand new body, and you're going to be put back on earth to where you're going to live in that end. And like I said, an incorruptible body with no sin and no nothing. Mm -hmm. That's one choice. Right. On the other hand, do you want to live a life where you have limits on you, where you, 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 you can't buy everything in Walmart? There's certain things in Walmart that you are not, that are forbidden for, for, for you consuming. Mm -hmm. You you can't go where you want and do what you want to do at all times. There's certain days that you have to sit down. There's, there's certain places you can't go. With certain people you can't associate. With. You have restrictions on your life that limit you, right, to, from from being able to do everything you 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 want to do. During the tribulation, that period where the other person got killed and was gone, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have trouble. It's going to be a hard time. You're going to suffer severely. And then you're going to live on to inherit the earth. You 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 will you will be one of the people alive. You're going to be old and crusty, probably. You know, like we already are, I guess. And you know, you're you're going to have children and grandchildren, and you're going to be waiting for these other people to be born as your children on down the road. So the only only difference is you're now their parents. So, mm -hmm. you know, so which one you could imagine no if you ask this to a hundred people, all hundred of them is not gonna choose either one. There's gonna be a split. Some people are gonna say, Hey, well I'd rather have this life. While mm -hmm. other ones say, I I'd rather have the next one. Right. Right. Because you all end up together. You you have the person who survived the tribulation, they're alive, you know, they they're still, you know, uh talking about how, how Things were before the tribulation, you know, giving their old old man stories or whatever. Things were different before when we was a kid and all of this kind of stuff. But then you have the the new child who is there, but y'all are all under the millennial age, all living under the father's will, all purified, all pain free, all happy, all, you know, singing kumbaya, all ready for the next stage of our evolution. Well, I do understand that, but um you know, in in other books and stuff, you know, there's it made you it made it think it made you feel like you 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 wanted to to be part of the chosen. There is judgment. You know, there's one thing to be to. I understand what you're saying. At the end, all of us gonna be in a purified and clean and all that other stuff. But yet and still, there is judgment for the things you know the the. The person that says, I'll just live it up and then I'll die. And the person that's being limited and careful and trying to abide by the laws and all. There is, there, there's, the judgment will be different. The judgment, right? the judgment is going on now, though. The judgment is going on now, but the, and the judgment will be different. Whereas the, the person who plans, the, the person who will survive, his pain will be spread out over a period of time. And, you know, over years, 
you know, he, he may suffer hunger sometimes, may suffer um, uh, persecutions all the time, he may suffer losses, you know, just, you know, suffering from the lack of the materialistic stuff. It, it, it All that works for your benefit. I don't know then. I mean, if you put it like that, which yeah, one would so you it's, rather have? It's like asking your kids, would you rather have a whooping or would you rather be on punishment? Some children are going to choose the whooping. Which is those that are, which in this analogy, are those that are going to uh, be killed during the, the killed and during the tribulation and come back, or would you rather be on punishment? Those are the ones who are set apart now. Those are the ones that are getting punished now. Would you rather get a whooping or would you rather be on punishment? What would you rather do? I always choose to whip them when I was growing up, but now I'm choosing the punishment. I'm trying to get this mess over with now. I want, right. I want, I want at least the opportunity to inherit the earth. You know, it, I, I do realize there are a lot of choices in this thing. There's martyrdom. There's inheriting the earth. There's, there's being, you know, killed or, or or whatever. My first choice would be martyrdom. But I can't choose that. I can't make that happen. You know what I'm saying? That would be suicide or whatever. But after that, you know, I would choose to inherit the earth. You know? And, and one of the main reasons why I would choose martyrdom over inheriting the earth, you know, not only is there, you know, special benefits that you get or whatever, you know, but, you know, my body is old and raggedy. You, we're supposed to live for a long time after this. The way I read the Old Testament, we ain't supposed to die no more. People, people don't die anymore. They don't like just like just like before the flood, there was something on there was something about the earth that allowed people to live for eight, nine hundred years. That something changed during the flood. From what I understand, it's supposed to change back, and people were supposed to live for a very long time. Oh well. Non unprocessed food. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. They got rid of all the sugar and salt and yeah, you know, but, coffee uh, and all the other stuff that is bad in the world. Yeah, the, that, that it's is. gone, you know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and so people are just living healthier lives. But you know, is this arm going to get better? Right. You know, is my eyesight going to get better? You know, this, this little limp I got, is this limp going to go away? Or am I going to be, am I going to have this limp for nine, 900 years until we wait for, you know, the new Jerusalem to come? Hmm. So you got choices in this day. Right. Right. All right, well, let's wrap this one up. Maybe we can talk about how we can make the right choices. Mm -hmm. Good class, coach. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.